Okay, this video is to take you through the uh, installing and setup of Euroscope using the Vancouver uh, sector files that uh, Gustavo and myself created. And we put together a package to uh, make it easy for you to start uh, controlling with Euroscope. So let's get started. You'll uh, download a zip file czvres file. This one is uh, version 4.0. Once you have that downloaded, put it on your desktop. And then we are going to extract it to the desktop. and you will have a folder called a CZVRES file version 4.0. Inside that folder is the CZVRES files folder. Take that folder, copy it, and paste it, paste it to the uh, root directory of your C drive. So C drive and then paste. And there it is there. Just to kind of take you through what's actually in that folder is all the files you need to get you going. So we have the alias files, ASRs, those are important. Uh, they uh, display the position for which you are controlling. You have the approach ASRs, uh, the center ASRs. These can all be modified to your personal preference uh, once you get familiar with them. ASRs, but we just designed them to be uh, sort of a default, get you up and running. ATIS files. Uh, these are for the auto ATIS, uh, which we're not really going to talk about in this video, and we'll be updating those at a later date. Data files. This is what Euroscope uses for displaying flight plan information and uh, route uh, data on the radar. Your POF. This is important. Uh, this will be used for login. And we'll talk about that uh, later. Scenario files. Uh, I've left one in there. Um, it was used by Gustavo and myself for testing the uh, sector file. Uh, Euroscope has a built-in simulator. You can run those scenario files. And we have uh, the sector files. Uh, you have the .sct2 file, which you're probably familiar with through VRC. And uh, one of the differences is Euroscope requires this ESE file, which is similar to a sector file, um, has various different settings in it, but this ESE uh, file must have the same name as the SCT2 file and must be in the same folder, which it is. And then you have the runway file, which is auto-created by Euroscope. When there are uh, version updates, um, they will be put out with the exact same name as these, so it would just be a matter of uh, copying and pasting the update over these files uh, and replacing them. And that will um, be as simple as that for updating. And then we have the uh, settings folder. Uh, this is where all your settings are saved in these various uh, text files. And these are all pre-set up for you to get you up and running. So there's no need to go in there and, and change those at this stage. That's that. And so you should have copied 
what's in this folder here, this here, CZVR ES file to the root of your C drive and there it is there. Once you've done that, you can close all that. Now we're going to download and install Euroscope version 3.2 if you already haven't done that. So open up your web browser and go to Google, Google or uh, whatever search engine you like and type in Euroscope. And you're looking for this here, Euroscope, Vets and Redoscope. Uh, web address is www.euroscope.hu. We'll click on that. Enter. And under Files, click on Files. And Standard Installer. They couldn't make it any smaller. You're either going to select Mirror 1 or Mirror 2. We'll use uh, Mirror 1 and we're going to save the file to our desktop so just make sure you're in desktop and we're going to save this to the desktop and it's downloading five seconds to go and that is downloaded one of the other useful things uh, that you should probably bookmark is the wiki um, for Euroscope right here and this gives you all the information about Euroscope, the help files, how it's all set up and run and so on and so forth be a, a good page to uh, bookmark. Anyway, continuing on, we can close that. So we have the downloaded installer for Euroscope version 3.2 and now we're going to run that. The installer will guide you through the steps required to install Euroscope version 3.2 on your computer. Next puts it in the uh, default directory. I'm going to allow everybody to use it. Next. Next. Standard warning from Windows. I don't think anybody reads those. Euroscope has been successfully installed. Close to exit. And you'll notice that it did not put a uh, shortcut on the desktop. It is in your uh, programs folder under Euroscope. There. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a shortcut on the desktop. New shortcut browse puts it on the computer in program files 86 Euroscope and this is the one you want here Euroscope.exe and OK next I'm going to name the shortcut, I get rid of the .exe and just have it named Euroscope finish and there it is, there's your icon and shortcut on the desktop. Okay, once you have that, uh, then we can run it. Double click. And it's going to ask you to select the POF file. 
Now I've already had this installed on my computer so it automatically knows where it is but it said it didn't know where it is and you just came up with something like that. All you do is you go to C drive, CZVRES files, double click, go to the POF folder, click and there it is right there. Click on that. You'll only have to do this once. Next time you open Euroscope it'll point it to the uh, correct uh, folder. And then we click open to run that. And your scope is starting. There it is. So it starts, loads its data, you get messages down here. Uh, if the messages turn blue, it means you get an error. If it's all white, it's all good. And uh, double click on that to get rid of that and this is the opening screen here and it shows you the uh, full FIR sort of faded into the background uh, that's because we're not controlling a position if we're controlling a position it will be a black background uh, which you'll see once we get started here but these show you the various center positions uh, for the FIR uh, Theoretically, you could have a controller for each of these positions. Wouldn't that be nice? Or you can have one controller controlling all the positions. Or you can have uh, several different controllers. Uh, for example, if they log on as the west controller, they'll control the west side and it'll join these sectors together. Uh, north controller, north side, it'll join the north sectors together. Uh, east controller, it'll join the east sectors together. But uh, that's sort of just the opening screen. Alright, the uh, first thing we should do is select on other set up here. Click on other set and make sure that auto load last profile on startup, that's auto loading the POF file on startup is unchecked. You don't want it to do that. If it was checked, you would see this here. Auto load last profile on startup. Make sure that that's unchecked. Also, make sure that auto save profile on exit is unchecked. When you exit, um, Euroscope will ask you if you want to save this and you want to save that. And uh, if it auto saves those things, you could screw up your settings. So just make sure that that's unchecked. Okay, next thing you want to do is set up your voice. And you click on the little uh, headphone icon up here. And the comms window opens up and you're going to select hardware setup. You're going to select uh, your microphone and headset for your primary device and for your secondary device uh, I like to put bass filter on you may not have to uh, I like to put it on and then you're going to test test the squelch uh, you're going to find squelch mode and you're going to be silent when you do this It returns a squelch setting, and you do it for your secondary uh, device. And there you have it. And then you can test it. Uh, you have to do this first before you test it. And when you test it, you're going to speak for five seconds. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one background noise is loud, that's because I have a uh, cheap microphone. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. There you have it. Okay, once you've done that, you can set up your push to talk keys. So you click on set and push the key you want for your primary push to talk. I like to use the left control button. Uh, same thing for the secondary. I like to use the right control button. 
and then you can close that and if you want to test it you can click on uh, connect mic to playback device push your push to talk button and speak and it'll come over your headset uh, you can't hear it coming back but I can okay. and that's just a way to test that it's uh, functioning properly once that's all set up uh, you can close that next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect uh, to VATSIM and we're going to connect as an observer as we do to see what's around you can also see what's around because I have it set to show simulated traffic and what it does is it goes out to VATSIM and uh, gets the information of who's online and brings it back but it doesn't show you who what controllers are online it just shows you what the what aircraft are online and, and in your area and that can be turned on or off under uh, the quick set here uh, show simulated traffic and you can turn that on and off uh, through there if you don't want to have that on Anyway, we're going to connect, so we click on the connect button, and because this is the first time running the POF, it's asking us to input our uh, personal data. Uh, you'll only have to do this once, and then next time you connect through the POF, it'll automatically be there for you. So, tell it uh, what server you want to connect to. You want to connect uh, directly to VATSIM. I can connect via proxy. You can run a uh, simulation sweat box session. Uh, you can play back a log file, and so on and so forth. I'm going to connect uh, directly to VATSIM. Our call sign is going to be any one of these. Uh, Gustavo and I have set up all these defaults. Every position for the FIR is in here. So you would select the one for what you wanted to control. We're going to log on as an observer. So we have a standard observer position here. And we'll select that. But we can change it to uh, what we want to be seen as as an observer. And uh, you can have 10 characters in here. And I'm just going to put that as my observer call sign. Uh, the facility is observer it's because we selected observer it's given us that and then we're going to select the server we want to connect to USA West uh, we're going to type in our real name and then our certificate number and then uh, your, your password if you're sharing POFs with other people you have to go into the POF and delete your personal information out of it otherwise they end up with your personal information so just be aware of that and that's all set up we're going to con connect to VATSIM and it sets our range automatically based on the position we select uh, proxy server uh, you don't have to run the proxy server but what the proxy server allows you to do is run uh, two screens so you can have Euroscope running on on two screens and they connect to each other so you can be looking at two positions simultaneously and once that's all done you can hit connect now because we're connecting as, as an observer the COM box comes up to select a frequency uh, you can see observer frequency up here 119.998 is what we're using if you connect as a controller this won't come up because it auto selects the frequency for you based on your position I'll just close that uh, you also get the METAR list for the airports and the airports that don't have weather they show up here no weather data you can just get rid of those by double clicking on them uh, initially comes up yellow if you've looked at it if you click on it it'll turn white 
if you want them all to turn white you just hit the little C here in the corner. You can close these uh, positions down here that's good. If you log on to a controller your frequency will come up down here and uh, you'll be able to type your messages uh, text messages to aircraft uh, hopefully we don't have to do that too much in here if there were controllers online you would see them come up under the list here uh, these little buttons are all clickable and it's uh, U is for unconcerned so if you don't want to see controllers that are online that don't concern you you can click to hide those and then you'll only see the controllers that concern you on here show observers um, show supervisors show ground stations show towers show approaches so show centers uh, and show FSS's on there next to that is your voice room so uh, any pilot that's connected to your frequency when you're controlling they will show up in your voice room here which is a handy little thing to have. Your different lists, uh, flight plan lists are down here and uh, sector inbound list, sector exit list and departure list and the aircraft come up in here. We're not going to get too much into that. This is about an install not how to uh, run Euroscope. But the various lists, th these things in here are all clickable so you can play around with that. Right click, left click uh, allows you to do various things. Assigning stars, assigning SIDs, assigning runways, temporary altitudes, final altitudes can all be done through the lists but also on the aircraft uh, tags themselves uh, you can do various things. I can't do much on here but clicking on the different positions uh, like I right clicked on his actual altitude shows his routing if I click on his uh, destination it comes up with his flight plan box uh, various things like that um, I can't do a lot because I don't control this aircraft but uh, once you can you have assumed the aircraft controlling the aircraft you can do lots of things through their their tags as well Okay, once we have all that set up, we're going to disconnect so that we can save the settings that we already have. Okay, so we're going to just disconnect as an observer. I'm going to close that, and then we're going to exit Euroscope, and it'll ask us to save the settings. So exit, are you sure? Yes. Do you want to save the automatically log session data? No, that'll come up every time. Okay. So here you've you've changed a bunch of settings. You've told it what your voice settings are going to be and all that, and it wants to save that. If you don't save that sort of stuff, next time you run your POF file, you'll have to redo it all again. And it wants to save the last session as you connected as you because you connected as an observer and so on and so forth. You want to save all that. Uh, and you we're going to click save on this normally what you'd have normally when you exit on this you just cancel all you don't want to save anything uh, not at the beginning anyway until you know what it's doing otherwise you can really screw up your settings so we, we're going to save all that save so next time we run Euroscope uh, knows where the POF file is we select it we open it you can create uh, different POF files as well uh, to load for the position you're running but uh, just for now just stick with uh, what we have here now it comes up with this again and now if you go to connect it's all the information is there ready for you to go boom you just hit connect you're right there this time what we're going to do is we're going to log on as a approach controller and we're going to, whoop, I'm going to find it here this is the tricky part is finding the position you want CYVR approach we're going to log on as Vancouver approach 
my rating. I should have saved that from the last one, but uh, anyway, we'll save it now. Position controller, I'm ready to go. Just by selecting the position, it uh, loads all the required information, and you're ready to go. You connect. And notice that the COM panel didn't come up. It's because you're logging on as a controller, it auto selects your COM frequency. And you can see your COM frequency has come up down here. Close those, and that's your COM box there. You type your text in here, and all comes up here. And you can see the area that you're controlling comes up dark. Now, obviously, uh, that's pretty small. You wouldn't be able to control using that. So what you do now is you load the ASR files for the position you're controlling. And you can load multiple ASR files. So you click on Open SCT, or Open Sector, and then go down to Open. And you s tell it where the ASRs are located, which is C drive in the ASRs folder. You're going to be approach controller. And we're going to see Vancouver is uh, wind is uh, variable, so we're going to say it's using the 8s. We're going to load the ASR file for approach onto the 8s. Click open, and there you go. There's your approach sector. The dark area is the area that you are controlling. The light area is unconcerned area. Uh, or other controllers are controlling it, and you don't care about that area. All you care about is the dark area. Uh, notice the meter list is uh, shortened uh, because it only loads the air airports of your concern. Close the ones that don't have weather. That's good. Also notice that uh, we loaded it for the 8s, but uh, the center lines are for the two sixes and that's because we have to tell it what runways are active. So we go up to the runway menu, we click on that, we tell it to just show airports that are uh, active airports for us. We scroll down to Vancouver International and we tell it we are departing on 08 left, we're arriving on 08 left. Turn off the 26 right. Uh, departing on 08 right, arriving on 08 right turn off the 26 left and we'll turn off the 12 as well and click OK and you can see now that it's changed the center lines around for the active runway. <coughs> it's also reloaded the the weather data. Because we're a Vancouver approach we also and Victoria approach isn't on uh, you can see the dividing line here but uh, we also control Victoria approach so let's load the ASR file for that as well. Uh, Victoria approach and what's Victoria's wind is 0806 so the Victoria approach is using 09. Uh, we'll open that and it loads the uh, area for 09 with all the stars and what have you. But again the runway is uh, center line is wrong. We tell it Victoria is landing on runway 09. and it's not using 2.7. You can still have them uh, depart on uh, uh, 2.7 if you want, but whatever, if you select a uh, active runway for landing, it puts the center line if there is an approach on that end. Okay, and there it is, it just changed over, and that's that. Now, here is the ASRs that you have loaded in here. Okay, We don't need this one anymore. That was the opening screen. So we select it and then we click close and that gets rid of it. And you can see that it's been taken out of the list here. If you want to go through the list quickly you push F7 and it uh, cycles through what's ever in the list. Okay, because we're a Vancouver approach, we also want to open Vancouver 
Tower. Uh, Vancouver Ground. Will we'll do. I'll open Vancouver Ground. And there it is there. Puts it in the list. We can cycle through the list. F7. Or we can select it right from there. And that's basically how you set up for a position. And you're good to go. That's it for the install. I'll just uh, disconnect out of here. Close. Again it's going to ask you to save a bunch of stuff. And I don't want to save any of this. I just hit cancel all. However, I changed, uh, let me see, and it tells you where it's going to save it. See, it's going to affect the POF here. And I am going to cancel all, and we're out of there. When in doubt, if in doubt, just uh, cancel all. Hope this helps you up and running, and I hope to see you online controlling. Thanks very much for watching.